G'day punters, welcome to Victims of the Punt. We're talking the Everest and also the Kosciuszko. Uh, it's a huge day around the country for racing. Mark Sheen and Mark Roden are here to help me find a few winners. Mark Sheen, I'll start with you. We probably need a weather update as well as a track update and then just get your thoughts on the meeting overall. Yeah, we had some storms last night. Uh, I think about nine mil fell on the track. So they've given out, uh, I think, a heavy rating this morning. The penetrometer would suggest it was more on the slow side, though. Number of penetrometer readings very similar uh, through the year around that five mark of uh, tossed up tracks around a six or a seven. Uh, there is a small band of rain on the way as we're recording at the moment. So we may get a little bit more. Um, so we just fingers crossed we don't get too much. Okay, track is currently a heavy eight. Mark Roden, Rail True, what are your thoughts? Um, it can be a little inconsistent, um, although we had a True Rail two weeks ago. This is a strange uh, placement pattern. They've gone True, Five, True. Usually they go out and out and out and back in, but because it's a big day, they've come back into the True. Uh, and the meeting two weeks ago was very much pretty considerably favoured the horses coming down the middle. Yep. Now you, and that was on a, a firmer track than this. You would expect with it softer that the fence would be no good. But as always in Sydney, we have to wait and see because it doesn't always play as you'd expect. Okay, we'll start at race five. We'll go through the race 10. Race five is the Kosciuszko, $1.3 million over 1,200 metres. The market, best available Friday morning. Edit is four dollars eighty. From Handle the Truth at five fifty. Art Cado is six fifty. Spiranak is seven, and then you're out to twelve dollars yes. with Nataraja. Mark Sheen, kick us off. Um, I didn't mind the win of Edit at uh, Tamworth. I looked up his uh, runs in New Zealand. He's got a couple of runs on wet tracks there. One run where he ran up to win. They put blinkers on him. His next start, and the one, and then another run where. Uh, he ran up there, Bulleye, all the way up the straight. So I think there is two wet runs. So looks like he gets through it okay. Thought it was a, a pretty good win at Tamworth. I'm just worried we're handled the truth drawn. Barry number one, that might not be where you want to be, especially uh, race number five. So I thought Ed would probably be giving them a start. Not a great beginner, but uh, I think he'll be running on. thought Island Bay Boy wasn't hopeless at the price. Um Handle the truth, obviously, the class runner has been running against Nature Strip and Eduardo, but uh, just barrier one with 59's got me slightly concerned, and we'll just have to look at the track pattern. Okay, I'm more than happy to hear you throw out Island Bay Boy because I was going to ask you about that. Uh, Mark Roden, your thoughts? Um, yeah, agree about Handle the Truth. He's, if he'd drawn a middle gate, I'd even be looking to back him, I think, at around this price, but you just can't bet, especially early out of gate one in the big field. He, he'll, <laughs> tends to get back, it, it, it could be a very bad spot for him. So, look, I've marked him $5, assuming that the inside isn't completely hopeless, but that could, if it is right off, then, you know, he's double figured odds chance, I think. So, we really have to go and wait and see. Uh, edit is my second pick. Um, yeah, 480 in the big field. Yeah, it's not, not screaming value to me. I had um, Patino Ruby next best, who I think was not really given much chance last start. Uh, it's been freshened up. Obviously, this is the target race, so I think it can go okay. And the next line for me were actually um, Island Bay Boy was one of them and Ceasefire, um, both at 20 to 1 plus. It's, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot Art Cano as well. He, he always runs well on these sort of country-restricted races, and soft ground is uh, a plus for him too. He's coming into it first up, but obviously been set for it all along as well. I think there's a few chances. Uh, probably doesn't end there. As you'd expect in a race like this, doesn't look a great betting race. I think if I was going to bet, I'd probably expect those two at 21 plus for something to watch uh, Island Bay Boy and Ceasefire. But um, good race, but a bit hard to get the head around, I thought. Yeah, Just going to ask, Mark, do you have any idea why Ceasefire is running in Australian bloodstock? Colours? No, I... Um, That's ownership. Yeah, that, that may have. I, I didn't go into that. Uh, yes, I did see it in those different colours. Yeah, I'm not it's, sure what happened there. It was, well, it's Paul and Sarah trained and Arrowfield owned, so... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, something going on there. I don't know what it is. OK. Uh, race six on the card is the Sydney Stakes. Intriguing race, Group 3 over 1,200 metres. Big Parade is $3.70 from Kementari at $5. Senior Fox is five fifty, six fifty for standout. Everything else is into double figures. Mark Sheen, any angles here? 
Um, look, the wet track has really stuffed me here because I thought Senor Fox was absolutely flying in his trials and, you know, he's such a good horse, fresh. Uh, look, he still may be able to get through it. He's, he's won on a slow six at Ramick one day. I think they ran 111. So probably just going to have to monitor what time they are running on the day. Um, look, I, I think I'll still side with him if it doesn't get any worse. Um, I, you know, if it's around that s slow six to slow seven, I think he can probably get through that. Um, big parade where you, you're banking on him winning back to back, which he's I don't think he's ever done in the past. Looks to get good favours here, though. It looks to be prime candidate leading and big parade probably parks outside him. So he does look to get the right run. Probably hard to beat, but I don't know if it could come at the price. Um, look, I'm going to lay Kementari here. Um, I think he might have his birthday the other day. I think I'll let him go. <laughs> Mark Roden, your thoughts here in the Sydney Stakes? Uh, well, I'm sure you won't be the only one opposing Kementari. It's been a pretty profitable enterprise over the <laughs> past few seasons. He hasn't won that often, but um, I think he's a chance in the race. Uh, he's, he's OK soft. That was a... He beats, you know, Newmarket winner and a pretty handy fit Squintex. That was a pretty pretty warmish sprint race down the Flemington Strait last time. I thought yeah. it was a good win. Uh, and I think he's in the race. And I don't think if it, you know, six, seven, maybe even to eight won't bother him too much. Um, not recommending you have your last on him by any means. I think Big Parade's a huge chance. Um, I think while he's never won two in a row before, I think the fact that they were able to settle him off the speed last time. Uh, he's just given him a bit, bit more versatility. He's massive when Kemble was going straight to the front and grinding him into the ground. Then he failed adopting those tactics the start after, and then with a little switch in tactics last start, he raced much better. And even though Gravina was probably unlucky not to beat him, they did space the others, and it was a pretty high rating race. So I think he's the obvious... Uh, I can see why he's favourite, put it that way. Senior Fox, yeah. I mean, his trials have been eye-catching to say the very least it's just how it's the track I, I think if it gets if it is genuinely heady then that just about gets rid of him but if it is closer to a six let's say with mcdonald on off those trials and he's a he's a massive massive chance in the race uh, uh they appear to be the three i've probably got for tours next best um what do you think a standout here mark um it's had uh, one it, run in the wet um yeah in the Canterbury Stakes and it was very pooey in the betting that day. There had been some whispers around that it hadn't been doing very well. Yeah. And I've... like that's its only failure in the wet. And I think a lot of people are just going off that, but like it's I... probably a pen job that run. I think I think the camp thinks he's a dry tracker only. If haven't they scratched him previously on yeah, soft? Perhaps, yeah. Uh I'm gonna by that. I yeah. Uh, I I mean, he's just been run down by Mars Crusader the last time, which was his best run in ages. I don't know. I just don't know how much I trust the horse full stop. But I, I'm worried about him on wet as well, to be honest. <clears throat> One, if there was going to be a blowout, I thought it might be uh, rocketing by. I might be able to get into the place. And he was in the big parade, Gravina race, but he was in completely the wrong spot, um, trying to make ground from the back. Uh, if they're running on, he could maybe get into the placings. But yeah, I thought Kementari big parade with the two on soft ground, the tracks the better side. That certainly brings Senior Fox into it. An interesting runner here too, I think, is Flat Heaven, who ran right. a couple of... Um, I ran very well first up last time in. I got badly checked all the way up the straight. And then at Gosford on a wet track, he went back to the fence, which was about six lengths slower. They are its two wet runs. He has got bar plates on tomorrow, which is not great, and also barrier number one. But, um, you know, if it's around 50 to one, it, it might be a question mark. Okay, one probably no. But I, I personally didn't think it was up to this at weight for age, you know, at level weights. With these yeah, horses. I understand, but, but um, that's, just at uh, the price. Thing. I, I would certainly wouldn't ever talk anyone out of backing a Bjorn Baker train horse either. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the Everest. Race 7, 1,200 metres and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Nature Strip is favourite, $3.80. From Eduardo, $6.00. So's Classic Legend. g is 7 Mask Crusader is 10, Home Affairs 11, The Inferno 19. Mark Sheen, what is your thoughts here going into the Everest? Yeah, well, I, look, I was trying to talk myself into Classic Legend earlier in the week, but I just think that extra rain is probably going to make the job a little bit harder. Um, he probably could have got away with it uh, if it was a four or a five, but I just think that extra bit of rain is going to make it a bit more of a slog, and I think Nature Strip has probably drawn the right part. 
Uh, I think he got into a speed battle, which un undid him there against uh, Eduardo the last time. He's drawn to sit outside them here and just camp off the speed of home affairs, and Eduardo wants to go forward. He can probably sit third or second, you know, just three and four deep. So I think he's in the stalking position and ready to win there. Look, I love Classic Legend as a horse, but uh, I think a lot will depend on how he turns up in the parade. He's had three trials, but I haven't seen him race day, and he is a gross type, so... I think a lot will depend on how he walks around the yard. Yeah, are you looking more at fitness there or more at temperament? Oh, definitely fitness. Yeah. Um, temperament, he, no, he walks around like a lamb normally, but um, he can just start to sweat up a little bit uh, in the first couple of runs uh, in the past because he is such a gross horse. But he'd only had one trial before every other uh, preparation and he's had three trials now, so... Again, I think a lot of people will be guided by how he looks. All right. Good timing being back on course for you, Mark. Uh, Mark Roden. Absolutely. What are you thinking? You've been on the strip previously. Yeah. Oh, I have to be on him, I think. Drawing outside Eduardo is a massive plus for him. Um, he drew inside him last time and then was in two minds as to whether to try and hold him out or and then if he wanted to, it didn't look like he was able to grab hold and take the sit. But... If he can just play it across from 10 and be outside Eduardo and whoever else wants to take it up. Uh, he settles a lot better these days. Chris Wallace really found the key to him. And this clearly, obviously, it is for all of them. It's his target race and got the right trainer, right jockey for the job. Um, I think it could be a repeat of the TJ in, in the autumn. Um, same sort of map and same sort of performance. Cosseet Legend, um, I think even Les Bridge was saying in the press, yesterday that he didn't want any more rain. Um, it would be one hell of a training performance if he was able to win the Everest. Um, it, it, obviously, he won it last year. It panned out really well for him last year. There was a dynamite, dynamite pace this year. Now, it's not going to be slow with the likes of Eduardo in the race, but um, it, 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 was pro it was probably suicidal last year and on a firm track. I mean, he, he was pro you know, he was midfield trail, just absolutely perfect position and was able to slingshot over the top of them. Uh, Eduardo... He'll be out in front. Wet ground, no problem for him. It's just going to be the last bit of 1,200. And if uh, a few of those are off their game, the uh, Gitra is the one who I expect to just run up to his level. And if, if the others don't bring their A game, he'll uh, find any chinks in their armour. He's done it before. Mars Crusader next best, but as we've mentioned um, many, many times, he'll be giving away a long start. It'll be a gargantuan effort to win, I think. Uh, home Affairs, I like as a horse. He had all favours with the bias in that win at Rose Hill, but I just love the way he fired out of the gates and took control and made full use of that pattern, but I really think he wants to drive for his best as well. So, look, it's a great race. It's a great race every year now, um, but, yes, I'm with my old friend at Major Strip. Very good. Race 8, Group 3, Craven played over 2,000 metres. Think it over is $2.30. Shared Ambition, 6. Hungry Heart is six fifty. KA Nautique is 9. That's pretty much the market there. Mark Sheen, any thoughts here in the Craven Plate? Well, this looks to just be a repeat of that uh, Wade Frage race a couple of weeks ago where they walked in front. Looks to be no speed again unless something breaks pattern. So you'd think shared ambition, think it over, it lob in front, and then it's up to something else if they want to want to go around and, and cause a bit of a stir. They let them walk in front the other day, and it was just a sprint from the 400 metres. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody, you know, does something a little bit before that uh, part of the race because it was a just a barrier trial. Um Look, I thought Bargain wasn't hopeless here at the bottom. I know, you know, it's wait for age and probably up against it, but she dead set is a very good wet tracker. And if they can run on from the back, I know the pace will probably be against her, but uh, I thought she was worth a bit of a ticket uh, just on on the wet ground alone. Think it over and Shared Ambition will obviously probably have a uh, race run to suit in the early part of the race anyway. So, you know, they're good chances again. But I'm, I'm just going a little bit wide looking for a bit of value because I don't want to take the short sneak it over. Okay, $20 around bargain there. Mark Roden, any thoughts for you? Yeah, I'd be going wide as well. I mean, I agree with Mark that the, just look at carbon copy map uh, of the, uh, what was it, the Hill Stakes a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But, um, look, Chair Ambition led in, in a, you know, awfully slow pace and wasn't able to win and think it over was sitting outside him and, and dead set collapsed over the line. And, Shared ambition, you only kick back and beat him. The only thing I like about them tomorrow is they they look like getting a similar map because I wasn't taking the either of their performances on that occasion. Think it over, it's beginning to look like at his best at 1,600 metres. Um, 
uh, you can get away with it in a, in a walking 2000 and maybe gets away with it again tomorrow. But at $2.30, you can, you can win without me. Um, yeah, oh, <clears throat> I, want back, I want to back Yonkers. I don't really want to tell anyone that I want to back Yonkers. It's a bit embarrassing, James. But, uh, but actually, yeah. at around, I mean, he's 30 to 1 in places. Uh, he came down the middle. I mean, it was an absolute pie race, but he came down the middle and won at Rose Hill that day when it was a hot rail. So he's defied the pattern at a trip short of his best. He's okay on soft. And in a race that I think, you know, is there to be won, I think it is, what is he, rank outsider, I could entertain a small bet on him. But it is that that sort of race. I'm, I'm, it's only because of the price I'm entertaining him and I don't like the favourite. So that's my reasoning there. Um, don't laugh at me if he runs last, but. What about your girlfriend, Hungry Heart? Does she want dry? Yeah, possibly, yeah. She well, yeah. she didn't finish all that far away behind uh, Think It Over in that wet ground that day at uh, the very elegant one. I'm not no, sure what true. that was at the Chelmsford. Or, no, well, that was about a seven that day, wasn't it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, look, and she has been very good to me. You're right about that. I thought Lion's Raw was nearly was, as nearly as good a runner as her in the Epsom. He's certainly looking for 2,000 as well. And uh, I, I thought they were maybe a bit too far apart in price. <clears throat> I must have six dollars for women. Six dollars, hungry heart. Yeah, it's 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 not a race I'm enthusiastic about. Put it that way. Head to the bar instead. Uh, race nine is a St Ledger over twenty six hundred. On Tont is favourite at four dollars. Uh, high emotion is five fifty. Loon Lunsies is eight dollars. Fun fact is eight fifty. Perfect deal is ten. Carif is eleven. Warnings twelve. Young Rascals thirteen. Goes a bit like that. Mark Shane, anything in the St. Ledger? Um, yeah, I'm going to bet around on Tont here. Um, uh, he was set up for three weeks in a row into the Metrop. He's had four runs in five weeks going into that. And then he was a query at 2,400. Now he's gone to 26. And I know he has one on wet ground, but he walked in front that day. So I'm going to look further afield from him. I'm going to lay him on Tont. Um, I thought um, Cariff would be an improver. Likes the wet, and I thought high emotion with no weight on its back uh, came into the race as well. So, Lunsies I would have backed if the track wasn't too bad, but I'm just a slightly concerned about the uh, the wet track. But uh, as it stands at the moment, I've got uh, eight and fourteen, so betting around the one. Okay, Mark Roden, anything for yourself in the St Ledger? Yeah, we've already had a bet for the uh, for Punk Club here on one of the ones Mark mentioned, and pleasing to hear he's in our corner a bit there. Uh, the bottom one, high emotion. We got a bit of uh, 750 and 650 yesterday. We bet just before the rain came. Uh, probably could have done with even more rain for this one's chances, to be honest. But um, look, even if it's a six or something, that's probably soft enough for her. And um, it just seems to set up beautifully, I think. Uh, she won the Ansett Classic at Mornington last year on a wet track by a big space. And she had best part of the year off after that she's had three runs she ran in the Ansett classic again this year and sort of learned up to win maybe peaked on her run in a pretty slow pace that's you know this race for half a million dollars has obviously been a target for her from a great uh stable uh the, the, the great trainer of stayers and kieran Mar. um i think with no weight if it can get in anywhere from barrier 10 i think it's going to be the one they all have to beat um on top yeah I mean, he's, he's racing in great form but uh, the Metrop might have been him. I think that was probably his target race. They're just going into this race because it's worth a lot of money and he's up and going. 2,600 is, again, a bit of an unknown quantity. Uh, what else have we got in the market? Um, yeah, I, I gave Cariff a chance too. Could even see myself saving on him. Um, fun fact, I think once drier, I, don't, I couldn't have it single-figure odds even on a six, to be honest. I think it's a good track uh, specialist. Uh, the one... I was hoping it'd be around 20 to 1 uh, and considering saving on his number two, Warning, who got a long way back in the Metro. Did close off all right, uh, even though well beaten and um, is looking for a soft track, I think, and with Nash on, um, can run a race. Not hugely well treated uh, under the set weights conditions, but um, certainly can run a race. But, you know, you see the his price range, it's 10 to $12. This is, they're, they're keeping it safe, you know, the, the, the market, for it, to be honest. But uh, let's cross our fingers and uh, hope Rachel King can get, get the job done on high emotion. Sounds good to me. That brings us to the last, which is a benchmark 78 over 1,400 metres. Equation, best available, $3.10. Pre-race, 
promise of success is three dollars forty. Then you're out to Suave at ten, Cape Breton at eleven, and everything else is twenty to one or more. Mark Sheen, do you like either of these fancies? Um, I did like Equation. I've uh, I didn't look at the prices there recently. Three ten. Uh, it's definitely come in quite a bit. Uh, look, I think this race sets up nicely for him. Uh, back on wet ground, um, quick back up. Ran in a very strong race last week. Um, looks to get a great run on my map. Should be just off the pace. So I think with the claim for Brock Ryan as well, should be in a winning position, one at 1,400 metres. So I think he's hard to beat. Um, I've been on this promise of success a few times. Look, she's a, she's a bit of a hard ride. She wants to pull hard, gets dragged out the back, gives away a big start. So oh, I'm not sure that she's value considering she's been in small fields, um, you know, seven or eight runners and now comes into a bigger field. So she'll need a lot of luck. So I'd rather be on Equation, who will be right up on the bunny, I think. Away from that, I thought Golly on Lucky is certainly going better than his form would suggest. He's had not had much luck, handles wet ground and would be worth a speck at longer odds. OK. Mark Roden, the last for yourself. Um, yeah, see it in a similar fashion. I went to equation over promise of success but i think the markets the market seems to have corrected now do you the tab there 270 290 in a field of 15 they're not really giving you my friend to move no. um when i first had a look at the form the other day um and not really thinking about a track pattern in the, when i was doing sort of the first cut I, I wanted to give suave a chance i thought um i was on sale my the other day and we were home for absolutely all money and this thing has launched um in the last 100 metres or so, and nailed it online. Run its last 211, admittedly off a slow pace and suck run, but, you know, you're launching home over 11 seconds, you've got something, but uh, as we've said about one or two other runners on the card, she's drawn one in a big field and she gets back. So it, um, I'll, I'll like her as a horse and I want to be on, I think there's a race for her um, coming up, but this might not be it from barrier one. Um, yeah, I... I just can't see any room to move in this market, but uh, for the record, equation is the top pick. Okay. That brings us to the end. I'll get your best plays, whether they be best bets, value bets, or lay bets. Mark Sheen, I'll start with yourself. I like uh, Fangirl in race number four. Um, I was going to back her in the flight, but they scratched her there last week, so well, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she only won a golden maiden, but um, I was on her a first start when she was given a sore back, and then she uh, she bolted in the other day, so she looks a promising filly to me. Has drawn barrier number one though, so you'll just have to uh, find the genius Jay McDonald to find the right part of the track. Hopefully, they'll string out and uh, they, he will find the best part. And uh, definitely laying on Tons and uh, probably Kementari as well on Tons certainly. Okay, three dollars forty there for Fan Girl in race four. Mark Roden. Uh, I think Nature Strip is a solid bet. Um, well, he's over $3, of course, is a solid bet yeah. in Everest. Um, high emotion is the bet I've had so far that I'm happiest with. And I'd just like to pass comment that it's fantastic to see Mark sticking fat with the Goulburn form after we got torched um, with um, O'Shea's horse last week, um, Cody Healy. <laughs> so, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, thank you both for previewing the Everest meeting. Mark Sheen, enjoy being back on course. I'm sure you've been waiting for it for... Uh, well, plenty of weeks, no doubt, now, but uh, you must be champing it a bit to get back out there. We'll have Rob Scurry back on course from Wednesdays of next week as well. Uh, we'll be back on Monday to review what happens there on Saturday. Until then, guys, go well. Mm -hmm.